Kia ora koutou, Marky here. So this video um, is, I was going to say a little bit different, but they're all different really. This this kind of comes um, off, the, off the thread of a series that I do called Psych Songs, where I look at um, various songs that have something in the lyrics to say about the human condition, the, the psyche, mental illness, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm kind of quite interested in, in song lyrics in general. So this one doesn't quite fit that mould because it's not about psychology, but it is about song lyrics and song meanings. So this song, uh, this uh, video hopefully will appeal to uh, Greta fans and um, will also appeal to Black Sabbath fans. So we're talking about heavy, heavy Greta Thunberg here. Do you like that? Do you see what I did there? Heavy Greta Thunberg. Oh, well, never mind. So, um, Black Sabbath. So, uh, Black Sabbath, um, this, this will appeal to, this is a kind of fanboy video as well, really, for people that like Black Sabbath. But if you haven't heard this song um, and you're just interested in the prescience of it and you're interested in Greta, have a listen. You know, have a, So this is a song called Children of the Grave, which uh, was on the Master of the Universe album in 1971. So it was you know, quite an early... Um, I mean, they were very prolific. They'd already you know, written quite a bit you know, prior to this album. And this is the famous kind of down-tuned album. People are telling the Black Sabbath story a lot more these days. So they, they made the tuning of the guitar and the bass lower uh, in pitch, um, which created uh, what's now known as doom metal, a doomy, gloomy sound. Now, now, as the story kind of goes, I don't know how much of this is attributable to Tony Iommi, the guitarist. He lost his fingertips in an industrial accident. I mean, the irony of this is it, it was his last day of uh, working, you know, in a, um, it was like a, it was a kind of sheet metal type um, workshop. Um, and he, because it was his last day, he was doing odds and sods and they asked him to work on a machine that he'd never used before. Um, uh, it was his last day before going into full-time musical career and he cut off the tips of his fingers. Um, the fingers that he uses on the fretboard. Um, so, you know, it's one of those real kind of, um, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat stories because he thought, well, I'm not going to be able to play. You know, most people would give up at that point and who, who would blame them, really? Um, but um, but Tony Omi's uh, boss at the time, who's, you know, probably feeling very guilty, went to see him and, and gave him a... Um, played him a record um, of somebody who is, who'd also kind of lost fingers and was, uh, you know, an amazing guitarist. So, so it affected the style um, of, of Black Sabbath music, but also, you know, this down tuning, I don't know how much this down tuning was to do with that and how much it was to do with, uh, you know, for musical reasons. But, but obviously, for those of you that, that don't know much about um, musical instruments, and I don't know a great deal, I know a little bit, um, if, you, if you tune something lower, then the strings are looser. So you have to exert, you, you don't need to exert as much pressure on the strings. The strings won't cut in so much to your, uh, to your fingers if, if it's tuned lower. If it's tuned higher, it's more taut. Uh, so what that's called is the action. The action in, on, a, on a, a guitar and probably other instruments as well is, um, is how proudly the strings stand up from the fretboard. Um, so if you've got a, a high action, then you have to press down harder. And if you've got a low action, then it's much easier and less pressure is involved. So uh, how much the you know how, how much the the that album where they chose to down tune was to do with uh, Tony Iommi's fingers? Uh, how much it was just to do with the sound? I don't know. But what it produced was a very doomy, gloomy, apocalyptic. Uh, sound, which had a you know, huge influence on um, heavy metal. You know, people say that Black Sabbath invented heavy metal. I think they probably did. I mean, there were there were heavy rock bands around at the time. Um, the, what they funny, funny enough, with Thrash, they talk about the Big Four, don't they? They talk about uh, uh, Anthrax, Metallica, uh, Slayer, and and Megadeth. Well, in the early days, you know that kind of you know if you like was a, a, a mirroring or repetition of. Um, the big four heavy bands in the early, late 60s, early 70s. So uh, and at the time that was um, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple and Uriah Heep. Uriah Heep seemed to have been, you know, forgotten. Um, amazing band. But they seem to have been kind of missed, missed off the pile there, really. I think um, Black Sabbath were... 
um, in some ways the least bluesy, although their origin was very much in the in the blues. Um, they kind of um, they left the the blues behind. So blues is you know to put it very simply, blues is you know is, is following a, a kind of a repetitive pattern. And what Black Sabbath kind of did more than those other bands, more than Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple and Yoni, is they kind of uh, they they broke the patterning. Um, and brought in an element of repetition. So they, they kind of, um, they were foremost in riff music, you know, so riff or refrain, we have a series of notes or a series of chords that's that's repeated. Um, and Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath is the king of riffs, you know, riffs was, was, was kind of his thing. He came up with some amazing ones. Although Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple beat him to the, to the top spot with the riff of Smoke on the Water, which is what everyone plays in the guitar shops. So, Black Sabbath 1971 down tuned album, Master of the Universe, um, some amazing uh, stuff on there. Um, the Birth of Doom Metal. Black Sabbath already kind of, if you like, pre invented black metal prior to that from the very start with their first album. Um, so the song called Children of the Grave, um, which is a fantastic song, you know. Um, you know, it's quite, it's quite remarkable, particularly considering, you know, how early, early on. Um, this was written. And things that people often miss and don't talk about with the song Children of the Grave. There's this fantastic thing going on rhythmically. So you've got you've got drums, but you've also got this um, amazing kind of repeated rhythm, which sounds very metallic. And to me, it sounds like somebody, um, I always picture a tin, uh, you know, tin sheeting, like a, you know, like a tin, a, a, a tin, a tin cladded roof. Um, and somebody making rattling sounds on the tin cladded roof. So there's this amazing repeated um, rhythmic bit that's added on, it's added to the drums. Um, and when people have done cover versions of uh, Children of the Grave, as many people have, and they've been great cover versions, they've all, to my knowledge, missed off that bit, which I think is one of the, you know, one of the most you know, amazing parts of that song. Because they were very experimental you know, in the early days, Black Sabbath. They did a lot of quirky little things that you know, hadn't really necessarily been done before, hadn't been done in, in the same way. So, uh, lyrically, and that's what this video is all about, uh, Children of the Grave um, uh, is, is about protest, it's about youth protest um, against the, um, you know, what appears to be the, the impending and imminent destruction of the planet. Sound familiar? Um, so, um, uh, I'll put the lyrics down below in the description box. I was hoping to quote the lyrics, but as usual, my mind has gone blank. So, um, how does it start? Revolution in their minds, the children start to march against the world in which they have to live and the hate that's in their hearts. They're tired of being pushed around and told just what to do. They'll fight the world until they've won and love comes f flowing through. Um, and then what's the final bit is... Um, um, Show the world that love is still alive. You must be brave before you children of the of today are children of the grave. Okay, so how Greta-ish is that? You know, somebody that's, you know, effectively a child that is having this massive impact um, on, you know, speaking up against the, the threat to the planet and the threat to our existence. The only thing that's changed really is that, you know, um, the song talks about the threat of uh, uh, nuclear war, which of course has not gone away. You know, it's probably more at the moment, probably more, likely than it's been for a long time really but we're talking about climate change um instead really is the most most impending thing Although there's there's a lot of impending doomy things around at the moment you know it's not just climate change it's uh you know there's there's an awful lot of um scary stuff as you know scary stuff going on in the world an awful lot of um i don't really like the word the word evil because i, I don't think philosophically there is such a thing as evil but there are certainly um a lot of um business driven money driven um self-centered psychopathic um forces working in the world to their own ends and um you know uh heedless of uh anybody else's needs or the survival of the planet or the well-being of other people you know that's that's a given really um you know, and that's not an extreme statement, you know, that's not a tinfoil hat statement. <laughs> that, that is clearly what's happening, you know, and we know that you know, neo, um, neoliberalism is, is all about corporations and um, governments 
stepping by and allowing corporations to do what they want. Um, and that's been happening for a long time with nearly all the political parties and, you know, all the nations of the world, really. So have a listen to, to this song. It's, it's one of my favourite Black Sabbath songs. And um, for me, the, the real magic of Black Sabbath, I mean, they were all um, exceptional musicians. I think that's the, that's the thing. And people don't often talk about this. You know, people talk about Tony Iommi a lot and, and Harry inspired a lot of guitarists and the riffs that he wrote, but they were all exceptional. Um, so Bill Ward, fantastic drummer, you know, really amazing drummer, a uh, very interesting drummer. And even Ozzy Osbourne, you know, people think of Ozzy Osbourne, you know, they think, oh, you know, he's, he's, um, you know, he's just a, he's just a, uh, what's the word, an imbecile, you know, he's just kind of, you know, we see him on, you know, we see him on the, um, the Osbournes, you know, and he's, he's kind of, he's lost the plot, you know, he's, he's just this full, not at all. I mean, Ozzy Osbourne's voice was the most, um, emotional and soulful voice in, especially in the early, I'm listening to the first Black Sabbath album called Black Sabbath and listen to the, listen to the sincerity and the emotion in that voice and the uniqueness of that voice. Now, Ozzy's always saying that he doesn't rate himself as a singer. He doesn't, you know, he, he's always talking about how he, he envies other singers who've got better voices. Technically, he's not the best singer in the world. Um, but there is a there is a soulfulness in that voice um, and a unique, but particularly in his early days, the early recordings were, you know, much more so. His voice changed a lot over the years. But the, listen to the first Black Sabbath album if you if you if you want to really see the talent of Ozzy Osbourne. Um, and everybody, you know, that's worked with Ozzy will say the same thing that you know he's he's extremely talented. But for me, you know, the the thing that I really love about Black Sabbath is is the dance that goes on between uh, lead guitar and bass. Uh, Tony Iommi and Giza Butler. I think Giza Butler is, you know, one of the best bass players uh, there's ever been. Um, you know, I think bass is one of the most underused um, instruments in the history of music, really. I think bass can do so much and often it does so little, but Giza's bass is kind of fantastic. Um, and Black Sabbath at their best is when you 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 know you get this magic between the bass and the lead guitar. So, in a different era, in the Dio era, the song Heaven and Hell, you know that is sex. That that is you know that is um, that is you know beautiful syn synchronized you know harmonized sex between bass and and guitar. It's a very sexy piece of music. Um, people don't often pick up on that element of it, but you know I think that's that's there if you listen. And um, in Children of the Grave, some of the bass lines are fantastic. And there's one particular bass line that I just really love, and I kind of, I listen, I wait for it, I look out for it. Um, and it's just a really kind of um, quirky little kind of lick on the bass that is just, kind of just that little bit different. And, um, you know, that's really, um, really, you know, just adds another little piece of magic to that song. So check out Children of the Grave, Black Sabbath, Masters of the Universe album. Um, is it Masters of the Universe or Masters of Reality? Um, Masters of Reality, Masters of the Universe is Hawkwind. And I always get the two mixed up. Was a Hawkwind, that's Hawkwind's, Hawkwind are great as well. Um, I could talk a lot about Hawkwind. So, um, Prescient, you know, listen to it. Have a listen now. I'm not going to put a link to it because I don't want to get all, um, uh, you know, uh, play any of it on here because I don't want to get clobbered by the copyright police. Um, but but it, there's plenty of versions of it um on YouTube, have a listen. Listen to the original. Listen and you know, look out for that quick. See if you can identify that quick little bass line that I'm talking about, um, and see if you know. See what you think of that kind of metallic um, rhythmic section that that um, you know is in addition to the drums. So uh, yeah, and you know, long live uh, Greta and people like that that are standing up to the corporations and the billionaires and the and the people that are just uh, serving their own agendas. You know. Rangi Mario.